remember in the beginning when we discovered that we were going to do the graduate school it 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 struck me that there was we had never been asked to do anything this important in our lives any of us the death rate and two to one kill ratio out in vietnam which had been going on for about five years it's hard it's demanding particularly to take something where naval aviation had been fighting a war for five years and somebody says i want to get well programmed i want it in 60 days you develop a graduate school and uh, as i said you got 60 days to do it in we really don't have much in the way of support to give you other than we'll loan you airplanes when you need them to do your evaluation and uh, don't lose any aircraft and don't kill anybody. But uh, I picked, and I don't know how this happened, but it, it was, it just happened that out of the 15 or so that were available that I knew well, I picked them uh, for specific aviation flight or combat experience for their technical knowledge and background. And I didn't have much time to do a lot of, a lot of checking. It was gut feeling of how good these guys were and how willing they were to work. I chose Lieutenant Mel Holmes, call sign Ryler. He's a brilliant aerodynamicist, not degreed in it, but very good. John Nash, call sign smash. A lot of F4 time, brilliant in tactics and had just come from Air Force Exchange at Nellis and was a pro in air to ground. Jim Rulison, Cobra Rulison, missile performance firing, firing envelopes. He brought more mental ability on the technical side for the radar, and the fire control system and both missiles. And he handled that almost single-handedly for the first 60 days. Jerry Sawatsky, a great big Polish guy, played uh, played football for uh, Bear Bryant and uh, just a superb aviator and an easygoing guy who we gave the adversary program right after the first 60 days. Jerry uh, ran the adversary program for me. Four pilots, you just heard them. Then we have to select NFOs or the backseaters, as we call them. I had, my first choice was J.C. Smith. J.C., former naval aviator, was probably the best RO or backseater I ever flew with. And he had the first mate of the Vietnam War. He shot it down with Blue Page as his pilot. A very fine teacher. Lieutenant Steve Smith, rebel. He uh, probably should have been a convicted felon, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. He's a superb RO, the kind of guy you could give a list of things at 8 in the morning to do. And by four o'clock in the air, 1600, he'd have them all done. Jimmy Lang, the famous Hawkeye, been on air, had more time on the ground in North Vietnam than any of us. He had been shot down twice, but he also got a couple of mates. And uh, easy going, quiet. He was my litmus test if we were going in the right direction. Darrell Gary, uh, backseater initially, went on to flight training again had four tours at Top Gun over the 50 years before he got out. And uh, great tactician. I know no better pilot than Condor was. Wayne Hildebrand was the last one, and he was our spook intelligence uh, specialist. We got him from an F-8 squadron, and uh, he started the archives of which exists today. Fallon has probably the best repository of tactical information in the world. Over the years, we have come to refer to each other as bros or brothers. I called the original 10, which were nine that were with me in its beginning as the original bros. And we still have a great reverence to that name. 